Hey, let's look at how you do this kind of a question. It's asking you to solve for the specific heat capacity. How do you know it's asking for you to solve the specific heat capacity? So look at this. A 1.6 gram sample of metal that has the appearance of gold requires 5.8 joules of energy to change its temperature from 23.0 degrees Celsius to 41.0 degrees Celsius. Is the metal pure gold? Gold has a specific heat capacity of 0 0.13 joules per gram degree Celsius. So what's going on here is it's making a couple of assumptions that we need to be aware of. Assumption number one, the main one, is the assumption that different materials have different specific heat capacities. So the assumption is that if this material, when you solve for C to find out what the specific heat capacity is, if it matches the specific heat capacity of gold, it must be gold. And if it doesn't, which as you can see at the end of the calculation, it's something other than, it's a different number, that means it must not be gold, or at least not pure gold. Okay, that's the basic assumption. Again, we assume that the two samples of the same material have the same specific heat capacity. Even if one's bigger than the other, they still have the same specific heat capacity. Um, if they are different compositions, or if they're made of different stuff, then we assume they have different specific heat capacities. So this thing here has us taking the equation Q equals MC delta T, and using that to solve for specific heat capacity. Now, it shows this here. Now, how did we get from here to here? Let's just be aware of what happens. So I'll rewrite the equation here. Q equals mc delta t for energy equals the mass of a sample times the specific heat capacity of a sample times the change in temperature for a sample. So if you want to find specific heat capacity by itself, you have to move all the other variables to the other side of the equation. You can't have anything else here other than just the letter C for specific heat capacity. So that means I need to, whatever I do to this side, I must do to this side also. So algebra demands that whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side also. So I'm going to divide both sides by M delta T. The reason why is if I divide by M delta T, then M cancels M. And delta T cancels delta T to leave just C on this side. So Q over M delta T equals C. And that is where this came from, see? Q over M delta T equals C. So that's the basic algebra behind it. Once we've done that, it's just a matter of plugging everything in. Okay, so for the Q, that's this right here. So the joules went in. The positive sign is just to emphasize that it's not a negative number. This just doesn't mean add something. This just means it's not a negative number. This means it's not a negative number. Uh, mass, that is right here, and that number gets plugged in, and that's what happened here. And the delta T, you'll notice, took the difference between the temperatures. It says changes temperature from 23.0 to 41.0. Hopefully it's clear that this is a rise in temperature. Whenever the temperature goes up, your delta T must be positive. Now, when people calculate this, this the correct formula is Final temperature minus initial temperature equals change in temperature. And when I've told people that, they get it right sometimes, and sometimes they just screw up. So the easiest way to do it is just subtract it in any order you like on the calculator, because nobody cares. And then make sure it's a positive number if the temperature is going up, and make sure it's a negative number if the temperature is going down. Hopefully that's easy to remember. So anyway, temperature is going up, so it's positive, not negative, 18 degrees Celsius, or 18.0 degrees Celsius. Now once you've done that, you can put this number here, and again, this plus is only to emphasize that it's not a negative number. So really what we're just saying is 5.8 divided by 1.6 times 18. So, um, so 5.8 divided by 1.6 times 18. So you could even like multiply these together and then divide by that, by that, or this divided by this, and then divided by this would give the exact same answer. And you notice there's only, why if you do this on a calculator, it actually comes out to a much messier number. But we rounded two significant figures here because this only has two significant figures, whereas these have a larger number of sig figs. So um, because of that, what we're going to do is uh, notice that the other thing that happens is the units. Look, joules on top, grams and degrees Celsius on bottom, so notice, joules per gram degree Celsius, okay? So the units give us what we need, and this is the correct units 
for specific heat capacity. Okay, so that's the mechanics of it, but again, so let's appreciate what we've done. So we took the energy divided by the mass times the difference between these two temperatures to find out the specific heat capacity of the metal and realizing that it doesn't match gold, it means it's not gold, or at least it's not pure gold, this sample of metal that's being tested. So I'm sure that helps.